The Last Leaf Story Bedtime Stories for Kids Today we have a book named The Last Leaf Story Bedtime Stories for Kids. I think they're so pretty. I hope you guys really enjoy it. I love it. Please give this video a like if you enjoy it, and don't forget to subscribe for more stories. Thank you, reading. So, here we go. In this little corner west of Washington Square, the streets are like a wild maze. They twist and turn, breaking up into these quirky dead ends called places. There's even this one street that loops around and crosses itself a couple of times. It's so messed up. It's genius. I heard about this painter who figured out a neat trick because of these crazy streets. Picture this. The guy's got a bunch of paint supplies he hasn't paid for. He's broke. Then this dude comes along wanting his money. But walking down this street, he could end up chasing his own tail, never getting a dime. This spot, it's known as Greenwich Village, became a total magnet for artists. They found these cool studios with just the right light and dirt, cheap rent. Sue and Johnsy set up shop in a three-story building around here. They were an odd pair, one hailed from Maine, the other from California. Sue and Johnsy bumped into each other at a cafe on 8th Street. Over coffee and sandwiches, they realized they were pretty much into the same stuff. Art, food, fashion. It was like finding your artsy twin. So they decided to team up, live, and create together. That was back in spring. When winter rolled around, an unwelcome guest snuck into Greenwich Village. This guy was invisible, creeping around, leaving a trail of his icy touch. He was a nasty bug, the kind that knocks you off your feet. Doctors had a name for him, pneumonia. He blitzed through the east side, touching loads of people. But in the tight lanes of Greenwich Village, he took his time. Mr. Pneumonia wasn't the kind-hearted type. You'd think he'd have the decency not to mess with a frail girl from California. But no, he had to go and lay his frozen fingers on Johnsy. There she was, bedridden, barely moving, just staring out the window at the neighboring building. One day, the doctor pulled Sue aside in the hallway, out of earshot from Johnsy. Her chances are slim, he said. She could pull through, but only if she really wants to. If someone's given up, my hands are tied. Your friend seems like she's thrown in the towel. Is something eating her up? She's always dreamed of painting the Bay of Naples in Italy, Sue replied. Paint? That's her worry? Seriously? Is it a guy problem? A guy? Sue was almost amused. No way. There's no guy in the picture. It's sheer exhaustion, then, the doc said. I'll do my best, but when a patient starts believing they're done for, it makes my job twice as hard. Try to get her excited about something like, I don't know, shopping for winter clothes. If she actually cared about what's coming next in her life, her odds would be way better. After the doc left, Sue ducked into their studio to let out some tears. Then she pulled herself together and headed into Johnsy's room, her art gear in tow, humming a tune. Johnsy was just lying there, super frail and quiet, staring out the window. Sue stopped humming, thinking Johnsy was asleep and started to work on her painting. But then she heard this faint, repetitive sound. Concerned, she rushed over to the bed. Johnsy's eyes were wide open, fixed on the window, counting backward. Twelve, she murmured, then a bit later, eleven, followed by ten, nine, then eight, and seven, 
almost in one breath. Sue peeked out the window, wondering what on earth Johnsy was counting. There was just this wall of the building next door, pretty close by. No windows, nothing. Just this old tree hugging the wall, its branches almost bare after the winter chill. What's up, dear? Sue asked, puzzled. Six, Johnsy whispered, quieter now. They're dropping quicker. Three days back, there were nearly a hundred. Counting them was a headache. But now, it's a breeze. There goes another one. Only five left now. Five what, hon? Talk to me. Sue's here. Leaves. On that tree. When the last one falls, I'm supposed to go to. I've been feeling this for three days. Didn't the doctor tell you? What? That's crazy talk, Sue exclaimed. What's an old tree got to do with your health? Are you getting better? And you used to be so into that tree. Don't lose your head over this, Johnsy. The doc was pretty optimistic about you this morning. He said, you've got a great shot at beating this. How about trying to eat something? Then I can get back to my painting. I need to sell it fast so I can grab more grub for you, help you get your strength back. You don't need to buy anything from me, Johnsy said, still fixated on the window. There goes another leaf. Nah, I'm not hungry. Now it's down to four. I just want to see the last one hit the ground before tonight. Then I'll be out, too. Johnsy, babe, Sue pleaded. Can you promise to shut your eyes and keep them closed? Can you do that for me until I'm done with my work? I need to finish this piece by tomorrow, and I need the light. I can't block out the window. Can't you paint in the other room? Johnsy asked, a bit coldly. I'd rather stay here with you, Sue replied. Plus, I don't want you obsessing over those leaves. Okay, tell me when you're done, Johnsy said, closing her eyes, looking pale and motionless. I want to see that last leaf fall. I'm tired of waiting, tired of thinking. I just want to drift away, just like those leaves. Try to get some rest, Sue said softly. I need to grab the Harmon for a bit. I want to add a man to my painting and I'll model him after Beharman. Won't take long. Don't move till I get back, okay? Old Beharman lived on the ground floor of their building. He was over 60, a painter who'd never really hit it big. For 40 years he'd been at it, but a true masterpiece had always eluded him. He always talked a big game about painting something epic, but never actually got around to starting it. He made a little cash by posing for other artists. The guy liked his drink too much, always yammering about his eventual masterwork. But deep down, he was a softy, especially for Sue and Johnsy. Sue found him in his gloomy room, the smell of booze hanging in the air. She spilled the beans about Johnsy and her obsession with the falling leaves. She told him how she feared Johnsy might just give up, like a leaf gently falling away. Johnsy's grip on life was slipping away. Old Beharman lost it when he heard about her leaf theory. What? People kick the bucket because leaves fall. That's the craziest thing I've heard. I'm not going to pose for your painting with that kind of nonsense going on. Why let her think like that? Poor little Johnsy. She's super sick, the Herman, Sue explained. The illness is messing with her head, planting these bizarre ideas. Look, if you don't want to help, fine. But honestly, I thought you'd be kinder. 
Spearman exploded, typical. Who said I won't help? Just go. I've been trying to tell you I'll come. God, this is no place for someone as sweet as Johnsy to be sick. One day, I'll paint my big masterpiece, and we'll all get out of this dump. Yeah, that's right. By the time they got back upstairs, Johnsy was asleep. Sue covered the window and led Bayerman to another room. They both peered out at the tree, worried. It was a nasty mix of rain and snow outside. The airman settled down and Sue got busy with her painting, working through most of the night. After just an hour of sleep, Sue was at Johnsy's side in the morning. Johnsy's eyes were wide open, fixed on the window. I gotta see, she insisted. Sue pulled the cover off the window. Despite the brutal weather all night, one leaf was still clinging to the tree. It was hanging on, dark green near the stem but yellowing around the edges, about twenty feet up. It's the last one, Johnsy said. I was sure it would have dropped overnight with all that wind. It's going to fall today, and that's when I'll go too. Oh, Johnsy, Sue said, her voice full of emotion. Think about me if you can't think about yourself. What am I going to do without you? But Johnsy just lay there, silent. When someone's getting ready to leave this world, they're in the loneliest place there is. The connections tying her to her friends and life itself were slowly fading away. The hours crawled by. As darkness fell, they could still see the stubborn leaf hanging on against the wall. Night came, and with it, the north wind picked up again, rattling the windows with rain. Come morning, the first thing Johnsy did was ask to see the window. The leaf was still there. She stared at it for a long time. Then she called out to Sue, who was busy whipping up something to eat. Sue, I've been so stupid, Johnsy admitted. That leaf, staying up there, it's like it's trying to tell me something that I was wrong to give up. I don't want to die anymore. I'll eat, but let me look at myself first. Get me a mirror, and then I can watch you cook. About an hour later, Johnsy was feeling more positive. Sue, I really want to paint the Bay of Naples one day. The dock swung by that afternoon. Sue caught up with him outside Johnsy's room. She's got a fighting chance, he told her. He was comforting, holding Sue's trembling hand. Just keep taking good care of her. She'll pull through. And I gotta see another patient here. An old painter, Bay Harmon. He's got pneumonia, too. But, uh, it's not looking good for him. We're moving him to the hospital, but it's pretty serious. The next day, the doc gave Sue some great news. She's out of the wood. Just keep her fed and cared for. That afternoon, Sue went to Johnsy, wrapping an arm around her. I gotta tell you something, she began. Mr. Thayerman, he passed away today. Pneumonia got him. It hit fast, only took two days. They found him in his room that first morning, in a real bad way. His clothes and shoes were soaked and freezing. Everyone's wondering where he'd been on such a nasty cold night. Then they found some stuff. A lamp he'd taken outside, his painting gear. Green and yellow paint. Look at the window, at that last leaf. Didn't you think it was weird it didn't flutter in the wind? Oh, Johnsy, that's B. Yorman's masterpiece. He painted it on the wall. That night, the real last leaf fell. The End 
Good job, friends. Thank you so much for reading with me. Bye, I'll see you next time.